Hello everybody, Ben Mobs here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to the Toronto Raptors 122-117 win against the Atlanta Hawks, and my goodness, this game was stressful. It was a lot more stressful than expected going into it. The Toronto Raptors now 29-14, and the Hawks obviously 10-34, and so the great discrepancy in terms of the records, but nonetheless, the Hawks came out fighting tonight. But the Toronto Raptors came out with the W, a fully healthy squad. Obviously, missed the podcast in the last couple games. We apologize for that. Been busy with events this weekend, so I, I was unable to get on the pod. But the the Raptors have been on a winning streak now. They've had the whole squad back, and when the offense is rolling, the the, the Toronto Raptors are looking like a team that could possibly come out of the Eastern Conference over the past few games. But we're talking about the Hawks game tonight, so we're going to dive straight into it. The first player we have to talk about is Norman Powell. He's been coming off the bench as of late, even with some of the injuries to Fred Van Vliet in particular. They, they've kept, Nick Nurse has kept Norman Powell on the bench, went with a bigger lineup the past few games with Serge Ibaka and Gasol in the starting unit, but now that Fred's back, he's taken his starting shooting guard role, but Nurse has elaborated on how even though Norman Powell is coming off the bench, he is still an integral piece to this team, and just because he's on the bench or he starts, whether whatever happens... He doesn't have to be looking over his shoulder for minutes. He, he's guaranteed that run, and that added confidence has just elevated Norm's game to an absolute another level. He's looking like playoff Norm out there night in, night out basis, and this has continued even after being injured for, for a stretch of games. Tonight, 27 points for Norman Powell, and for the Toronto Raptors, they started off the game like the first quarter, they were up 36-25. to 25. Then they're really outplayed in the second quarter, and then as the 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 third quarter, the start of the third quarter really wasn't looking good for the Raptors. And then Norman Powell turned into Norm God, as we like to call him, and he just was hitting three after three, contested shot, driving the lane, getting to the free throw line. No matter who the Hawks decide to switch on to him, he was he was just El Fuego tonight, six for nine from the three point line, and. That's the thing. Norman Powell, usually when he misses his first shot, second shot, misses, doesn't get going super early. He'd usually fall into a shell of himself and either start to force it when he gets the ball or just pass off immediately. He'd make his decisions up, and Leo brought up his decision-making was, was usually an issue for Norman Powell, but he's always had the intangibles and stuff to, to be a star player. I've been repeating that for the past two, three years on this podcast, but now that the decision-making has caught up with his sort of play style and his ability... You could make an argument that he's playing like an all-star the the past stretch of games where he's been on this 20 point plus streak because he gets the rim he, he can knock down threes he's always been an elite defender for the toronto raptors and there's nothing you can really do uh, a lot of you know three-point shooters usually get in their grill and they they try and dribble around and not much happens but norm's explosion in terms of his first step and his ability to finish around the lane now and draw fouls you can't get up into him too much and then we saw vince carter play like a veteran you know sag off him a little bit and when the confidence is flowing he was just banging shots in people's faces so if norm can keep up this confidence which has been the case over the past almost two months if we including the stretch he sat out it's been a a season for Norman Powell, man. He's taken an extra leap. I'm really excited to see if he can t continue to keep up this level of play throughout the course of the season. Because if he can, and we can bring this sort of firepower off our bench, it it's going to be really tough to beat the Toronto Raptors team. That added scoring that Siakam's already picked up a load of, and Fred Van Vliet, obviously. If, if we can get more points off our bench, more of a spark that got everyone else going. We saw Serge Ibaka start to knock down a couple shots because of the hot streak that Norman Powell inserted into the team. Then we saw TD also. He was playing a good game regardless, but he had a couple shots after that streak and had a really nice dunk, and it, it was just a phenomenal sight to see. So, yeah, that, that bench unit that, that came in there, they did a really strong strong performance. Uh, Rondé Hollis-Jefferson had a Rondé Hollis-Jefferson game as well. Seven points, ten rebounds off the bench. Yeah, the bench came in with energy. The TD, Norman Powell, Rondé Hollis-Jefferson, they, they came out, played well. Ibaka missed a few shots, but I like that he stayed confident and had the highest plus minus on the team, and that's because he's out there they're playing, playing tough. So shout out to those four guys. Another guy at the bench I'm going to leave for the segment, so we won't get into that now. But yeah, the starters also had a solid game in this one too. Pascal Siakam, 18 points, 6 rebounds. Didn't take over 
like you probably would have wanted him to, considering a lot of stretches in this game, we really could have used some insertion of offense. Norman Powell, thankfully, did it in the third and fourth quarter, but Siakam didn't have a huge stamp on this game for a lot of it, but did get us a few points, didn't, had a, didn't have a bad game by any means, but I talked about this at the beginning of the year. He stepped it up before he went down with injury, but Pascal Siakam, as the lead option, as the number one guy, these are the types of games you you want him to do what Norman Powell did. You want him to go on a 10-point stretch by himself. The way we saw Kawhi do it, the way we saw DeMar do it at times, and Lowry in 2016. As the lead option, you want him to do that in games when it matters. When when the buckets count, that's when your lead option should go off. And obviously, it takes him a few game, anyone a few games to come back from injury and get back to the level that they were playing at prior. But yeah, we're, we're getting a three or four games now of Siakam, Siakam playing. So in the next couple, I'm looking to see if he can make his imprint when the Toronto Raptors are, aren't rolling, when they're not free-flowing. Get show Prove that he's that superstar player that he's asserted himself as being. So shout-out to Siakam, solid game. Fred Van Vliet, steady Freddy. He had 20 points tonight, 2 assists, 4 rebounds. Not as wild as that Minnesota game, but certainly a strong night for Freddy. Came down... He, he hit most of our points to close this one out. At the end of this game, the Hawks went on a run. We'll talk more about that later. But he really silenced the crowd, knocked down his free throws, knocked down a really clutch mid-range jumper when it felt like the Raptors hadn't scored in three years. So, Steady Freddy doing it as always. And Kyle Lowry, 10.7 assists. Didn't really shoot that much from three, but this is a game you don't really need Kyle Lowry to go all pitbull, go all out. Maybe you'd like to see him take advantage of Trey Young a little bit more, but... He was selling for some threes. They weren't going down. But when you're playing the Atlanta Hawks, you probably don't want Kyle Lowry going into the lane every possession, trying to turn the thing around, save it for the, the younger players and all that. So I'm not definitely not going to get down on Kyle after this one. OG, he had a solid game. He's been playing well as of late. Didn't didn't really show off much. I don't think he was a huge negative. I thought he played some pretty solid defense, but his impact just wasn't really there. So four points for OG, four rebounds. And yeah, that's that's a lot of the players. I guess Marcus all as well. He had 14 points tonight. It's looking like Mark is being a bit more aggressive in terms of looking for his shots, going in the lane a little bit. He missed a few free throws, which is weird tonight, but not down a few threes. I, I like to see a more aggressive Marcus all. If he can get us 10 to 14 points a night, which I think is very reasonable for him at this point in his career, if he can get us a few of those points, it's going to be a super massive plus for the Toronto Raptors offense. Super massive. That's a... That's certainly an adjective, but we're going to swing it straight into the segments tonight. The spicy P-Lay of the day. It's It's got to go to Norm Powell's complete, utter supernova that he displayed on the basketball court tonight because he was hitting contested shot after contested shot, and it was needed. The Toronto Raptors, I think, were down before Norman Powell went on that stretch before he really decided to take over. He hit a couple threes right in a row that were pretty open. Then the Hawks defense kind of adjusted towards focusing on Norman Powell. Then he was hit. He had a really contested shot over Kevin Hooter on the right wing. Hit one in the corner. He was just, the, the bench was absolutely going wild. Then his his just shots and plays that he did there, it, it got everyone else going. Serge Ibaka, again, I said earlier, knocked down a couple shots. And I guess another in contention for the spicy play is Terrence Davis. He got a nice dunk in the fourth quarter, which capped off the Raptors' run, and it, TD's dunks, man, he gets up there, he's a smaller guy, he had family in the building for the for the game tonight, but I wouldn't mind seeing him try and poster some people every more often, it wasn't a poster tonight, but he can get up, he's got that kind of Russell Westbrook vibe, and how he, he's a smaller guy, but he gets mad up there, it doesn't matter who in his way, who's in his way, so maybe you'd like to see Terrence Davis try to try to poster a few more people, but that capped off the Raptors' run, and it kind of led into the next segment, because not all plays can be the spicy p lays of the day, and some just make you say, oh, jeez. Tonight, the oh, jeez plays of the day, were they're all plays tonight. It was the Atlanta Hawks reversal on the Toronto Raptors. They came back, and the Raptors, I think, were up by 21 at one point. It was It looked like it was over with, like, five minutes to go. Then, Trey, led by Trey Young, the Hawks came out with an aggressive press that we've seen Nick Nurse implement and run against the Dallas Mavericks, and it looked, this game kind of paralleled that sort of run at the end. It looked like the Hawks, they brought it to within three or two, maybe. I think it was actually two points. The Raptors blew a massive lead, had, had the bench unit in, and subbed in the, had to sub in the starters like a minute 30 to go. Thankfully, Fred Van Vliet was able to calm everything down. He he really tapered the, the Hawks' run, but that run made me say, oh, jeez, because... 
they were hitting everything, they were getting shots, and the big reason this run occurred feeds into the Damari Carroll Gold Star Award. And that's going to, he's gotten it a lot this season. He's gotten it a lot because he's getting big minutes and doesn't always produce. But Patrick McCaw, in my opinion, was certainly a negative for the Toronto Raptors tonight, particularly how he closed the game. Once the Hawks started running their full court trap, McCaw was, had the ball in his hands a lot because Fred Van Vliet was not on the court, Kyle Lowry was not on the court, so Nurse likes to run him as the primary ball handler when, when they're not out there, obviously. TD, I think, probably deserves it a little bit more, even though McCaw is a bit of a better passer at times, but he really struggles dribbling, especially when he's under pressure. I get that he has the, the point guard vision, so to speak, but when he's got pressure on him, man, he's he's slipping everywhere. He, he throws the ball in random places. He doesn't cut to get open properly enough for a point guard in the NBA. There was one possession where he just completely turned it over. There's the next where he slipped and the possession got all kind of out of whack because he threw an errant pass. I don't think he got the direct turnover on that, but I don't believe he scored. Then I believe he had Trey Young on him. McCaw has a huge size advantage on Trey Young. And being the point guard, the de facto point guard out there, uh, he you got to cut to the ball if you're being denied, especially when a smaller guy is on you. Norm was just waiting, looking at him, waiting for him to make a cut. Then we saw him almost fall in bounds and have to throw a pass straight to the Hawks defender, and McCaw just kind of stood there. He he fouled Trey Young on a three-point shot, which ended up being a four-point play. It was just a brutal look for McCaw down the stretch of this one. And you look at his box score, he didn't produce out there much, either two points, four assists, Three steals, which is, I guess, fine, but down the stretch of the game, you want to at least keep Trey Young in front of you, especially you have the length and the size, and he just could not keep anyone really in front of him at the end of this game, and I was just really disappointed in McCaw's performance throughout the whole... It was just your average, mediocre game for McCaw, where he does little things fine until the till the very end, where he just really almost blew it for the Toronto Raptors, and then Nurse leaves him on the court. That's a Nick Nurse is a basketball genius. He knows what he's doing. He's a championship coach. He's super innovative and all that sort of stuff. But he he weirds me out at times with how much he plays McCall. So that's the Demari Carroll Gold Star from me. Anyways, the the Toronto Raptors got the win against the Atlanta Hawks. Thankfully for some Norman Powell heroics, we got some fun games coming up. And stay tuned. The Raptors Digest will we'll be back on track in the videos now. Anyways, you're the best for making this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all the cool stuff. I'm signing out. Cheers.